there are tons of 3D printers coming out right now. But the next generation is mainly focusing on multi-material capability along with new fabrication techniques. So let's take a look at some of the most incredible 3D printers out there. Now FDM printers can build objects with overhangs, but they usually need to print extra supports which take time and material. So the University of California has tackled this problem with an adjustable bed platform. Once each pin is at the correct height, they are locked into place using a magnetic disc and a ring combination. Larger overhangs starting over 60mm can reduce 35% material usage and 38% printing time, which is pretty impressive. In the future, they plan to incorporate a closed chamber, which allows for better temperature control. They also hope to bring this technique to other types of 3D printers. At number 6, the Lit Hollow. You can now supposedly 3D print holograms up to 4.5 inches. And it's not quite true volumetric display technology, but you can take 3D models from several different software programs, such as Sketchfab or Qlone, and convert them into holograms. 23 images can be encoded per pixel, so the holograms can display several seconds of motion. This is done by etching information via laser onto a special film, so that multiple perspectives can be encoded. The printer should cost around $1,000, but it is worth mentioning that this particular project is funded by Kickstarter. So obviously we should have skepticism on whether or not they can actually deliver this product. Moving on to the next position, we look at a different type of printer which can print photonic crystal fibers. Now these fibers are a subclass of optical fibers and they feature internal channels which can run along the entire length of the fiber. This improves the fiber's light trapping and propagation properties. So basically this means that it would allow for faster transmission rates and less information loss. Similar to a resin-based system, it actually uses UV lasers and cures polymers into solid parts. Some pretty sophisticated cross-sectional areas can be printed and programmed directly into the fiber. Now I don't think this is going to print miles upon miles of fiber optic cable, but it could be good for smaller applications. At number 4, we look at a modified laser cutter. Now, this latest device from MIT Sale is a multifunctional fabricator which can build ready-to-fly drones from the ground up. It can do this by using a laser cutter, a gripper tool, and a conductive paste dispenser. Now, the user can customize the object, place components, and draw circuits all within this laser factory program. It could also build other robots and it's capable of folding structures within electronics. So it's a pretty versatile program. Now we should just keep in mind that it's not going to be able to 3D print the GPS module or the ESCs for that matter. So it's kind of like a fabricator and a 3D printer combined. Nevertheless, incorporating these two worlds can lead to very advanced designs. And this type of machine might be able to make a very complex micro robot. Moving on to number 3, and it's the Fortify Flux. This can be considered a next generation DLP fiber printer. The Flux combines magnets with digital light processing to align fibers, allowing for an increase in durability, strength, and stiffness. It does this in the Z dimension, and it goes all the way down to 25 microns, with a flux density of 600 gauss. Users can also tune properties for different regions of a part. One example of this would be directing electrical conductance to a certain area. But unfortunately, this type of accuracy has a pretty hefty price tag, up to $150,000. At number 2, the Up Nano Bio. I have covered the Nano 1 before, but this modified machine can print living cells. This combines two photopolymerization with a hydrogel bio ink, which allows for direct printing at the nano scale. 2D drug development has been around for some time, but the Up Nano allows this to be done at the 3D level, therefore leading to complex 3D micro tissues, and this mimics natural growth conditions in the human body. This also allows for microfluidic chips and it could be a key for more advanced nanorobotics. We're not quite at the level where this will 3D print a skin casting for a humanoid robot or a replacement for skin grafting, but it is an important step for tissue regeneration and pharmaceutical research. Now we look at number one, and it's probably something you have never heard before, which utilizes the SIM process. 
You can kind of think of it as having sand on top of a flat surface, with a speaker driving frequencies to form specific shapes. But the printer takes it to another level and it cross-links it with light, thus allowing for different patterns to be stacked on top of each other, creating a 3D print. This dynamic stacking will allow for regeneration of functional tissue. It also exemplifies that we are getting very close to being able to 3D print organs, and that would be a very beneficial thing which could save lives in the end. Now, one other concept I'm just going to briefly mention, which a lot of research is being made into, involves ultrasound and computer algorithms for non-contact manipulation. Theoretically, this type of machine can form and settle the material into complex shapes. It would be scalable, and it could also allow for rapid patterning of cells. So the future 3D printer might be something completely different than from the ones we see right now. So once again, Thanks for watching, please like this short video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.